Hello everyone and thank you for joining us at this Your Overseas Home webinar. My name is Rosie, I'm a senior copywriter at Your Overseas Home. Today we'll be chatting with Chris Zakharayu from Chris Chase Buchanan about your financial considerations that you should think about when moving to Cyprus. It's great to have so many of you with us today, whether you're watching live or catching up on demand. Before you start your presentation, Chris, please could you introduce yourself and let us know what Chase Buchanan does? Hi, yes, my name's Chris or Christopher. Um, Chase Buchanan's a wealth management service out here in Cyprus and across the rest of Europe as well. You've probably seen from other webinars on your overseas home. Um, I'm based here in Cyprus and Rosie did a great job pronouncing my second name. Not many people do it the first time. <laughs> Something we probably should have practiced, but no, you smashed it. Amazing. I did actually think I was about to say it. I was like, I should have asked this. <laughs> no, I'm I, I, glad I did it justice. That was really good, yeah. And, and to everyone watching, get practicing because it's not just my surname that's difficult when you're out here as well. So <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be good practice. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so today we'll be talking about um, tax, pensions, residency, all the kind of things you need to uh, think about in terms of moving Cyprus and planning to move in Cyprus, which is, which is the key. And, and uh, yeah, and a little bit more about these in the slide. Not a lot, um, but a little bit. Okay, fab. Thanks, Chris. Um, so Chris has got a presentation to share with us today. Um, once we get to the end of it, we'll open up the floor to questions. Should you have any questions as we go along, um, just type them into your tab on the right hand side of your screen. Um, and we'll get to them at the end. Um, we do hope to answer as many of your queries as we can today, but if we don't have time to get round to them all, don't worry. We'll send all the questions across to Chris and his team at Chase Buchanan and they will get back to you. So let's get started. Chris, over to you. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the presentation. Um, I, you can see the first slide was a bit about myself, Chris Zakarayu. I'm a private wealth manager here at Chase Buchanan, and we deal with private wealth and predominantly financial planning, which is which is what everyone here is here to do, is plan ahead in terms of their move here to Cyprus. And a little bit more about me, I've got over five years experience in financial services, actually eight, but I think four or five had a better ring to it in terms of the way it looked on the screen. And I'm, as you can probably tell from my surname of Cypriot descent, both my parents moved to the UK before I was born and I did the opposite and moved back here to Cyprus um, earlier this year. So hopefully I can give you a unique perspective, as it says there, um, on Cypriot culture as well as British culture and be that go-to in between that you can talk to, not just about financial planning, but how to say good morning, good evening and good afternoon and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the ch a checklist. Now, you've all done the right thing here. You've you've come to a webinar such as this to, to, to really plan ahead and um, plan for, for the potential move. It's probably quite daunting. There's a lot of things online. There's a lot of misinformation online in terms of, as you've probably seen in the slides going forward, a lot of the rules changed this year and it probably will change again next year. So keeping that up-to-date information online is a bit difficult. I know that firsthand for when I moved here and the people I've spoken to as well. Um, but hopefully we can clear things up. Um, speaking to a regulated financial advisor before you make the move to Cyprus is important for some of the reasons we'll pick up in the in this uh, webinar. Taxation, in terms of residency, things you need to think about and um, what kind of stuff you need to look out for before making the move and really consider so you're best prepared. Um, and an important note to remember if you've got financial advisors or IFAs already in the UK, they are no longer able to advise the EU um, because of Brexit, no longer able to advise you once you become a residency of Cyprus. That's um, recently come up in one of my previous meetings this week. Uh, we had clients who had took a recommendation from their advisor, their former advisor in the UK. They basically put it around the 5% withdrawal rule on offshore bond, not realizing that's no longer, that's no longer re relevant because they're living in Cyprus and savings is, um, taking withdrawals from investments and so, and so on is classed as a return and savings. So there's no 5% um, rule, there's, everything's tax-free in terms of the offshore bond. Um, and 
basically you need to look at the investments you have, the pensions you have, the savings and everything and how that's going to change because of the change of lifestyle and, and, and residency. Um, so the next slide, Cyprus wills. This is something that you'll need to definitely consider in terms of when you do move to Cyprus, especially if when you're buying property over here in Cyprus, they operate with something called forced airship. And that's especially important for those who have been in previous marriages. So if you've had relationships with pre-previous marriages, sorry, and had children from those previous marriages, they will most likely go to the first children before your intended um, people. That may be the case that you want, but that's something to definitely plan ahead for. Have both a will in Cyprus and the UK, and then um, that, and that's something that should be made available for when you do purchase a property here in Cyprus. It should be a part in terms of setting up the Cyprus will. And if you don't have that, you've got our number at the end of the at the end of the presentation, and you, and you know where we are to to put you in the right direction and hopefully help you with the um, estate planning after the fact. Personal tax, well, personal income tax in Cyprus and how it may differ. Um, an individual is a tax resident of Cyprus if they spend more than 183 days in Cyprus during one calendar year. Um, in terms of tax, you're probably used to being in the UK, having the tax um, year being from April to April. Here in Cyprus, it's from January to December. A lot more simple, but not for those moving from the UK to Cyprus. So that's something you definitely need to consider. Being here more than 183 days automatically um, actions you use being a resident of Cyprus and something that not a lot of people take into consideration or even talk about is the 60 day rule. So if you, especially, and this is very especially relevant to those who have property in the UK still, are looking to travel not just in, to Cyprus but to other parts of the world, if you are here for longer than 60 days and nowhere else for 183 days you'll still be considered a um, resident, a tax resident here in Cyprus. So that's definitely something you'll need to look out for. And, and this is obviously very personal to the individual. So if you think that this is something that you could be in the bracket of, it'd be worth um, contacting us after the fact or um, reaching out via email and really seeing if this could affect you or not. Cyprus personal tax rates, as you can see from the table here, um, tax rates are a little bit more favorable. Uh, the first 19,500 is nil tax, so that's completely tax free, and then it goes up from there, 19,500 to 28,000, it's 20%, and so on. So, for example, if you have an income of 30,000 pounds, the first 19,500 tax free, the, the next um, 8,500 will be taxed at 20%, and then the remaining 2,000 will be at 25%. And uh, a lot of people are probably aware of the foreign pension income tax, um, which is flat rate of 5%. So as you can see from the spreadsheet, 3,420 euros of that is an allowance. So anything above 3,420 euros can be taxed at a flat rate of 5%. However, and again, this is very individual to, to what, what situation you're in, what income you're expected to have. If there is a scenario where, it, it, there may be a scenario, sorry, where it may be more favourable to have to not use the flat rate 5%, it is, it is an option it, it, and you can fill that out on your tax returns um, and it might be favourable if you do the calculations beforehand and I'm sure a lot of you are aware of what you're expected and what you're what you hoping to get and we can quickly see what's, what's best for you, whether or not it's using the tax rate or if it's using the flat rate of 5%, it completely depends on the individual and what they're expecting to receive. Changes to residents, uh, oh, sorry, I should say back on the previous um, slide as well, we will be more than happy to help anyone um, obtain their tax codes. Um, it, it's fairly simple, but it's only simple for those who have done it. So anything that we can do to help point you in the right direction and explain the process would be really worthwhile. And then also tax returns, they are all now in Greek. So it might be favorable to have someone who speaks Greek and English. Uh, and read Greek and English as well to help you with that as well and I'll be more than happy to pick up the phone and, and, and talk you through it. So that's something we can definitely help with. And this is what we talked about at the beginning of the uh, webinar, um, changes. The change, there's already been a couple of changes this year, um, probably more changes to come and it's hard to really 
obtain that from the internet. I'm sure a lot of you have done that. I'm sure a lot of you have struggled through that. I know I have, and part of the reason why you're joining this webinar is to get some clarity. Um, but as of the 1st of January 2023, there has been changes to the residency applications for third party individuals. There are additional requirements now needed with residency application. Uh, and one thing I will say that's not on this slide, but definitely important, make sure that, and I'm sure you're all aware, make sure that your passport's at least three months in a uh, date at the time of the application, otherwise it will not uh, be processed and it might delay certain aspects of what you're hoping to do. But some of the new requirements are an annual income of 24,000 euros. Now, in some cases, and specifically for the first um, residency application, having 24,000 euros in the bank may, may, may be acceptable, um, usually is, but that's something that's more likely in the first application and the second application, it might be a bit more difficult just to process it without having that income come in. But an annual income of uh, 24,000 euros, a clear criminal record certificate from the country of origin or residence, so that's wherever you're based, whether that's the UK or Spain, um, original medical exemption certificates for blood tests and, and, and so on, and then a chest x-ray to show clear from, so, so you're clear from tuberculosis. So, um, and then those last two can be obtained here in Cyprus on when you do um, first come out here as well. It's fairly simple and quite cheap as well. Why purchase the property in Cyprus? Um, there's obviously a lot of subjective reasons to why you want to purchase property in Cyprus, but some of the more objective reasons are it's relatively low cost of uh, living, and I know Rosie will attest to this living in London. It's probably a lot less than a lot lower cost of living for sure in, in certain parts of the UK and, and high quality of lifestyle. And, and I've been here for a few months and obviously been here most of my life in terms of back and forth, visiting family. There is a melting pot of different cultures. There's a lot of UK citizens, former UK expats. There is obviously the Cypriots who are very hospitable, hospitable Germans, all different types of um, different types of people, and, and really nice, high quality of lifestyle. Um, favorable policy to obtain permanent residency uh, through acquisition of real estate. We'll talk about that in a couple of slides to come. And one of the top destinations for retirement. Um, as you can probably tell from um, how many people are part of this webinar now, it, it, it's, it's, it's a main place, it's a tropical island at the end of the day, so it's one of the bigger reasons why people uh, do retire here and the tax levy for purchasing, purchasing a movable property is relatively low and again that'll be something we'll discuss in a slide coming forward. Capital gains tax in Cyprus is 20% and is payable on financial gains from sale of Cyprus property. Um, one thing that's probably you're aware of capital gains tax but back in the UK is slightly different. Uh, well, it's not slightly, it's very different. Capital gains tax not just on property but also on investments and what discussed previously. Um, any investments you have that you're taking income from or withdrawing money from is classed as a returns of savings. So, and here in Cyprus, the, the uh, allowance for capital gains tax is €17,086. In the UK, it's currently 7500 and it's taxable at 40% after the fact. So, so, and here it's 20%. So, very, very, um, very good in comparison. And this will be, up, this will be uh, in relation to your first uh, property that you purchase. Uh, an allowance is made for transfer fees paid, inflation rate per year, and cost of the uh, additions made to the property. And gains from the sale of the property are exempt up to 85,000, uh, just over 85,000 euros if the owner resides continuously for at least five years prior to the sale. So if you live here for longer than five years, then that, you'll be exempt for that. Annual property taxes and fees. Now, the first two are very similar to um, council tax in the UK. So local authority fees is about 85 euros to 500 euros and municipal, municipality tax is around about 0.1% to 0.2%. And this is very dependent on where you're looking to purchase. And like, again, using UK as an example, your council tax in London will be a lot higher than the council tax in Barnsley. Um, so that's something depend, completely dependent to the person and where you're expecting to live. Um, and sewage tax is a bit different as well, um, depending on where you want to purchase. Um, there may not be a sewage tax for, um, for those who use them. Um, basically, if you live in a village or just outside a city, 
and there will no be there will not be any sewage tax. For example, my um, colleague Gillian, who's been on these webinars before, you probably know her well. Um, she does not pay sewage tax, and me, who lives in the centre of Pathos, I do. Um, so that's again very um, that's important to know where you're going and what you're looking to purchase, and something you'll probably discuss when going through the process. And I'll definitely be able to help with that as well. Stamp duty in Cyprus is fairly explanatory from the um, from the table. As you can see, the purchaser is liable for a payment of stamp duty on the purchase price of the property at the following rate. So it's zero to five thousand, zero percent, and then so on. As you can see on the table, um, and again, very dependent on the property you're purchasing. But that's something that should be fairly simple when um, trying to plan ahead. Uh, buying the property for residency and um, third country nationals from the 2nd of May 2023. This is a new um, a new rule that's come into place from the 2nd of May 2023. Um, UK citizens are now classed as third country uh, nationals following um, Brexit. And so this is, this is quite a common list of things that need to, that, um, sorry, um, this is uh, the clear criminal record and so on. It's quite common in terms of third country nationals, but you'll need to pro purchase property over at least 300,000 euros plus VAT um, it must be a new build and you need to prove that you have an income of 50,000 for the main applicant and then additional payments for additional income sorry for any spouse or minor children under the age of 18 that you're expecting to bring as well and uh, obviously a clear criminal record certificate for the country of origin or residence and uh, certify that you do not intend to work in Cyprus which you wouldn't want to you want to be at the beach <laughs> most of the days and, and then drinking in the evenings I'm sure VAT is payable on property in Cyprus. It's 19% when buying a new property, except when a reduced rate start. Ex oh, God, I'm losing my word, sorry. It's 19% VAT payable when buying a new property. A reduced rate is, um, starting at 5% is payable, is applicable for purchases of new properties subject to conditions being met. So depending on what you're purchasing, it could be a 5% starting rate rather than the 19% VAT. The property must be a primary and permanent resident for the applicant for the next 10 years and the applicant has not purchased another property at a reduced rate so basically you get that flat rate for sorry that um starting rate of five percent for one individual property and not, and not a second so that's only applicable for one and it is really dependent on the size of the property so when you are out here looking for different um houses or apartments and, and that garden looks amazing and big you probably need <laughs> probably somebody needs to take into consideration and um, so that's very again very individual to the person and what per property you're looking to purchase general health system here in cyprus it's, it's very favorable it's similar to the nhs back in the uk it's very important to me for when i moved I'm, I'm type 1 diabetic so it was um one of the first things i needed to really get my head around and patients have the option to select their healthcare um, from a private to public uh, healthcare sector and contribution rates are as the table shows. So you can see for employees and those who are coming here to work or employers, and then obviously pensioners there 2.65%. Um, and that's something definitely to consider when moving over. I know a lot of you will be, um, this will be on top of the list for a lot of people. Um, general health uh, system contributions are capped at 180,000 annual income. So if you are having an income of more than 180,000, you won't be um, um, paying a percentage of that above 180. And I absolutely flew through that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, this is my contact details. It's a difficult name to spell, so I'll keep this page up for a while. Um, and my mobile number and then our office number as well, as well as our website, so you can look for a second opinion. <laughs> Fab, thank you so much, Chris. Um, so we have time for some questions now. Um, if you have something that you'd like to ask, Chris, um, feel free to just drop it in the tab. Um, I do have a quick question. On this slide, um, <laughs> The top point, 19% VAT is payable when buying a property. Is that just for a new property or is that resale as well? 
That that specifically is for a new property. Um, in terms okay. of resale, depending on the property, it might be a, a bit more wavering. But that's something if you do have that um, specific question and you're not purchasing a new property, get in touch, and I'll be more than happy to um, have a look at it with my colleague Jill and and give you a, a more defined answer. Okay, fab. All right. No other questions. Um, what other um, advice could you give um, regarding inheritance tax? And um, plenty of advice. Um, definitely something you need to consider in any situation. You've built up a certain amount of wealth throughout your life. You've built up pensions and investments and savings, and you want to make sure that's protected. And um, whether or not it's to go to your children or your wife or your husband, but or, or to you, even your cat, that's something you definitely need to take into consideration. Again, and I'm very sorry about this being the generic answer. It is individual to the person, and that's something yes. that. If you do have these specific questions, again, give us a call. We'll be able to speak through anything that you may may want to talk about. And you're in your specific scenario. So if you have a pension here, if you have ISIS in the UK, how that will affect you is, is, um, is something you definitely should consider before moving. Okay, cool. Um, I imagine that um, if, let's say, I want to move to Cyprus and I want to work out there, mm -hmm. um, that 24 grand minimum that you mentioned, is that for people who are retired as well? Sorry, you echoed a bit there. Sorry, Rosie. So, Ori, um, the 24,000 euros minimum requirement, yeah. is that, does it, is it the same for retirees as well? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's something that just in terms of getting residency, um, for the for the first application, that's that's twenty four thousand would would need to be uh, shown. Okay. Um, Mark's asking to relocate to Cyprus when retired. Sorry, could you just mute yourself while I'm talking? Is that okay? Definitely. Um, yeah, Mark's asking to relocate to Cyprus when retired. Do I need to buy a new property or can I purchase resale? Um, you can purchase a resale, that, that's something that's um, definitely applicable and something that um, may, may may change a little bit in terms of some of the planning you need to consider, but it should be fairly simple and, and again, something that not only your real estate um, agent, but ourselves will be able to help you with, for sure. Okay. Um, Craig asks, um, he's been told that if you can prove you're not as I think you mean if you can prove you're of Cyprus heritage as far back as your grandfather, you're tax free for 17 years. Is this correct or are there stipulations? There is stipulations. This is something I consider obviously both my parents are of Cypriot descent. Um, so that's something. And then depending on your age as well, there may be um, some. Um, there may be um, army service that you might have to. <laughs> Um, consider as well so so if you are going down that route it, again very individual to the person and um, something there's a lot of different things you need to consider when you're applying through um, Cypriot descent. Um, Peter's asking he has savings in an ISA and premium bonds would it be best to move them before he comes to Cyprus? So, so once you're here in Cyprus, it'd be very difficult, next to impossible, to move, move it over, and that's mainly because you'd have to, unless you're willing to do it yourself. But um, your financial advisor in the UK will no longer be able to advise you or help you in that certain process. And then speaking with us as well, although we are FCA regulated, but post Brexit, now we're based in Cyprus, we're no longer able to um, help with ISIS and, and, and so on. So we're CISEC reg registered as well. You'll see all the registrations on our website. Um, so that might, may, might put you in a bit of a predicament, but that's something we can definitely discuss and your options that you have before moving and then once you do move as well. Okay, Fab. Um, Mark's asking, is there a minimum purchase price on resale property as there is on new builds? I actually, I'm not sure. Um, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, Jill, I think, is in the audience as well. She's probably screaming out the answer, but uh, I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. Um, let me take down his details and I will send him across an email or, or a message to, to confirm that. No, that's great, yeah. I think it does um, depend on what, if you're applying for a visa or anything like that, so it really does yeah. depend. Um, 
Exactly. Um, yeah. I'm sure Chris will be in touch. Yeah, definitely. Um, one more question. We've got Peter. Um, he's renting first, but still working in the UK. He's, mm -hmm. For instance, staying in Cyprus for four to five weeks, then flying out to the UK to work for a fortnight, then returning. Will I need citizenship and will I be taxed in Cyprus as well as the UK? So, so this is where the 30 day rule come into account. So if, if 60 day rule, sorry. So if you're here for more than 60 days and you're nowhere else for over 183, day, 183 days, you will be classed as a um, Cyprus tax resident. So that's something definitely need to speak to someone like ourselves to just make basically cover all corners and make sure you're not paying tax you don't need to or, or get into a confusing state. <laughs> Yeah, definitely plan that out. Um, yeah. I, say, I think it's the 90 day rule. Um, oh my God, I, 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 God. it probably is. I, don't I, worry. I Rosie, I blacked out at the beginning of this. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you've clocked off soon, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, so I think that's about all we've got time for today. Thanks, Chris. You've been great. Thank, Thank you for you sharing all your knowledge. Um, for everyone listening in, um, whether live or on demand, we strongly recommend you get in touch with Chase Buchanan to discuss your requirements in detail, as Chris mentioned. Um, before we finish, we would like to invite you to leave us a review on Trustpilot if you found this webinar useful. Thanks again and happy property hunting. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye.